after a busy week in Ottawa with debates about the Middle East and non-confidence motions, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is joining us live in studio uh, to talk more about that and everything else that's happening in Ottawa. And we'll have a bit of a GTA focus as well. Mr. Polyev, welcome to CP24 Breakfast this morning. Good to be with you. So, so let's talk about, you know, the last couple of days in Ottawa, the uh, confidence motion uh, you were trying to get passed over the carbon tax. We know you want to spike the tax, spike the hike and axe the tax. Uh, we know that's your plan here, uh, and that didn't quite work in Ottawa in the last couple of days. But what would a conservative environmental plan look like? We know what you don't want in terms of the carbon tax, but what do you want to see to deal with climate change? Well, we do want to axe the tax because it's not working. It's uh, after eight years of Trudeau, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have doubled. And now he wants to hammer us with an April Fool's Day. Joke's on you. Carbon tax hike of 23% as part of a plan to quadruple the tax, which is going to drive, it's going to kill jobs. It's going to force seniors to choose between eating and heating. And uh, so we, we moved to a non-confidence motion to uh, force a carbon tax election so Canadians can decide. We think that lowering the cost of alternatives is better than raising the cost of traditional energy we still need. We did green, green light, green projects like nuclear power, hydroelectricity, tidal wave power, carbon capture and storage uh, so that Canadians have an abundant supply of affordable emissions-free electricity and power. Uh, so again, here's the choice. Do you want to raise the cost of traditional energy we still need? like gas and home heating, or do we want to lower the cost of uh, low-emitting low alternatives? And I believe in the latter. That's common sense. Uh, I can certainly see politically what you're trying to do, and it seems like polls are on your side in terms of the unpopularity of the carbon tax or carbon rebate as it's been rebranded recently. And also there are seven premiers from across the political spectrum in this country who are lined up against the Liberals' kind of like flagship proposal or policy as mm -hmm. it is. I want to know, though, if you were the prime minister and you had seven premiers across this country lining up against something you were pushing, what would you do? Would you listen? Would you reverse? Like, do you blame Justin Trudeau for sticking to it, as it were? I do blame him for sticking to it because it's a terrible policy. Uh, it's driving up the cost of food, for example, when you tax the f farmer who produces the food and the, the, the trucker who ships the food, the grocer who sells the food, you tax all who buy the food. And that's why 2 million people are lined up at food banks across the country. 32% of food banks or charities are turning away Canadians because they don't have the resources to, mm -hmm. to feed them. Now we have a dumpster diving network. That's 8,000 Canadians who've joined a Facebook group learning how to jump into a garbage can to get a meal out. Yeah. These are things, uh, there was a police had to be called in because there was a near riot at a food bank in Montreal last week uh, because food ran out, people were hungry. Um, th this would have been unimaginable before Justin Trudeau, but after eight years of doubling housing costs, of driving up food prices, uh, he's, he's given Canadians some misery. He's not worth the cost, he's not worth the crime, he's not worth the corruption. Uh, we need a common sense conservative government. And if you were in government, would you listen if seven premiers were opposed to your... If seven plan? premiers... Well, seven premiers aren't going to have to tell me to ax the tax. I will ax the tax with or without seven premiers. My common sense plan is to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Uh, and uh, the next election will be about the carbon tax. It will be a gigantic referendum on whether you want a, a 61 cent a litre carbon tax or you want to ax the tax to bring home lower prices. Okay, let's talk about Toronto here because, of course, Toronto is, you know, like it or not, and some people don't... Don't like it, but Toronto seems to be the economy that moves a lot of this country here. Uh, this city has been looking for a new deal from the federal government and seems to go cap in hand to Ottawa quite frequently. I'm sure a lot of people watching right now, people who potentially could be voters for you in the next election, may be wondering, what are your thoughts on the city of Toronto, whether it needs a new or specific special funding plan? You can think about, you know, just a few weeks ago, we had refugees sleeping on the streets at a, at a shelter around here, newcomers to this country, welcome to the country, but had nothing when they got here and it sort of fell to the city of Toronto. What would you do for the city of Toronto? And do you think the city needs a special or new financial deal? Well, after eight years of Trudeau, uh, er, Toronto's broke. Um, after he promised so much and Toronto elected nothing but Liberals, what did they get for it? Well, they've got uh, people lined up. One in ten Torontonians are at a food bank every month. Yeah. One in ten. We have uh, refugees, federally uh, invited refugees, sleeping on the streets. Thank you very much, Justin Trudeau, for that. Uh, we have a doubling of housing costs. After eight years of Trudeau, it now takes a quarter century, 25 years, for the average family to save up for a down payment in Toronto. You used to pay off an entire mortgage yeah. in that 25 years yeah. before Justin Trudeau. So my common sense plan 
would do a number of things. One, we're going to fix the broken immigration system uh, so that we bring in the numbers that we can absorb. Two, we're going to um, link the number of federal dollars that Toronto gets and all cities get to the number of homes they allow to be built. Um, the bureaucracy at the City Hall is blocking housing construction. I want to incentivize faster home building. I require Toronto and all big cities permit 15% more home building per year as a condition of federal funding. If they don't hit it, they'll lose their money. If they beat the target, they'll get a bonus. I'm going to require every federally funded transit station be surrounded by high-rise apartments so young people and seniors can live next to the bus or train. Uh, we're going to sell off 6,000 federal buildings, thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. And we want those to be in safe neighborhoods. Right. So we're going to end catch and release uh, and bring in jail, not bail, jail, not bail. We're going to give out treatment and recovery, not uh, free drugs. Uh, and uh, we're, we're also going to stop going after law abiding hunters and sports shooters instead go after real gun criminals by sealing the border to, to stop criminals from ta bringing drugs and guns in and taking our cars out. Let, let's talk about housing because a lot of that answer mm -hmm. was, was sort of housing specific. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, Premier Doug Ford, uh, your sort of federal or provincial cousin, as it were, kind of slammed the door shut on the idea of building fourplexes in and around the city of Toronto. The current federal housing minister, Sean Fraser, sort of poo pooed it on Twitter saying, you know, he's missed an opportunity to build housing. You want to see more housing built. What do you think of that decision? Should fourplexes be allowed in the city of Toronto? to sort of help bring more people to the city? Well, there are more than four plexes. I'm looking out the window right now. I guess it's more for the neighborhoods apartments. in the sort of urban areas rather um, than downtown. I think we need more. We need to build up and we need to build out. Um, I'm not going to prescribe exactly how that's done. What I'm going to do is pay for results. So right now, the federal government is sending big fat checks to municipalities every single year, which they use to build up their bureaucracies and block home building. Uh, Toronto is one of the worst. Uh, City Hall is terrible here um, for house. Horrible, like unbelievably bad. Um, almost as bad as Vancouver, which is the worst. So what I'm, my, my policy is very simple. I'm going to say to Tr Toronto City Hall, you want federal money, you're going to have to get out of the way and let builders build. And you have to permit 15% more homes per year, or you're losing federal money. If you beat the target, you'll get a bonus. Realtors are paid for the number of homes they sell, builders for the number they build. I want municipalities to be paid for the number of homes they permit. Pay for results, get results, and that's what I'll do. Kind of a carrot instead of a stick there, it sounds like. A bit of both. Yeah, I actually. guess it's a bit of both. Uh, yeah. GTA-wide, uh, you have a new Conservative MP in Jamil Giovanni. He just yes. won in Durham, a Conservative seat to, uh, for the person, of course, you took over from Aaron O'Toole. In his acceptance speech a few weeks ago, he went right after his former boss, Doug Ford, the PC <laughs> leader here. I, I wonder what your reaction to that was, and if you've either spoken to your candidate or your, your, your member of the party or Premier Ford about that, because it seemed to ruffle some feathers, the idea that he kind of went after his old boss. No, I haven't. Uh, my focus has been on axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. In fact, we have a federal budget coming up here, and uh, Justin Trudeau has doubled our national debt and printed $600 billion of cash. No wonder we have such terrible inflation and high interest rates. So our major focus, and Jamil's, uh, will be on capping government spending, cutting waste to get rid of these deficits so we can bring down inflation and interest rates. Uh, and uh, so I'll focus on my common sense plan and, and ignore the the, the political noise. Uh, on the pol political side of things, how would you characterize your relationship with, with Premier Ford? We don't, we don't see the two of you together that much. Uh, he's the Premier of Ontario. My, 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 I'm the next Prime Minister of Canada, so I'll work with all pr Premiers uh, on my common sense plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Uh, and um, I'll, it doesn't matter who you are or what your co party colour is, uh, if you share those priorities, axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime, let's bring it home. And you also talked, uh, <laughs> one more quick question here, you talked about building trans or homes around transit, buildings yes. around transit, that kind of a thing here. Uh, transit is, of course, a big issue in, yeah. in Toronto, and the TTC lost $124 million from fare evasion last year. What do you think about more federal funding for the TTC, a system or and service that kind of always seems desperate for cash. Now, we just can't keep paying for failure. This idea that every time some level of government screws up that they should get more money from taxpayers is over when I'm Prime Minister. Municipal funding will be based on how houses built. So if, they, if the City of Toronto or any other city wants more federal money, they will have a very simple formula to do it get out of the way and let builders build more homes. Because right now, we have the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we spend by far the most share of our economy on home building, mm -hmm. and we have by far the most land to build on. What's the problem? Bureaucratic gatekeepers blocking it. I'm paying cities to get out of the way and let builders build, because I'm not going to accept the, the idea that young, an entire generation have to give up on having kids, 
owning a home, building home equity, and ha living a good life. That, the, that is the Canadian dream we took for granted before Trudeau, and it's a dream that we will restore when I'm Prime Minister. Pierre Polyev, thanks for joining us on TP24 Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Great to see you. Thank you very much.